The third one is very important, which is what is called as a while loop. Okay. So what happens is that if I got a condition B, okay, the condition B will allow me to check whether it is yes now if it is not true then it comes out okay but here there is a catch and the catch is that if the condition is true in when i am processing this s I'm going to manipulate the status of B and if suppose the B is true then do S okay S includes a lot of operations and I will also do something on B okay go back again and check this condition so if I say here Again, one entry, one exit, but the while loop is that while the condition B is true, continue to do the operation S. Okay, and S is going to do involve several steps. Now there is a catch here, and the catch is you may get into an infinite loop and never come out of the uh, construct. If you, in that S, if you don't change the status of B. You are never going to come back. You will go into an infinite loop. And this happens in your programming practice many times. You will say, oh, the program is running. And it's so good program that is running. It is running. It is running. <laughs> the, the reason is you have programmed it incorrectly. And therefore, it is getting into an infinite loop. Okay. If you don't want that to be in an infinite loop, and if your logic has to be that continue to do something till you get some condition the moment the condition becomes false you come out of it okay so this is called as the while loop the other one is called as the if condition and the first one is called as the assignment statement conditions believe it or not whatever logic you have the entire computer program how many lines you may have what is the construct so you have to break it down into steps each step again you have to break it down into sub steps each sub step you have to break it down into Finally, the, the leaf nodes of your structures will be these three only. Okay? And that is the beauty of computer programming that ultimately these are the three simple operations which can, will allow you to write any program whatsoever. Now, there are two important aspects. One is the, uh, oh, I didn't write the details here. So, the, so forget about what I have written here, the title is important, that there will be some read instructions, input. So you have to have some input instructions and similarly you have to have some output instructions. Okay? Uh, so I will write down the details and then only put it on the Moodle. But read and write or input and output along with these three constructs, all the five things, once you know this, frankly speaking the rest of the course is nothing but elaboration of these things. Once you know these five things, that's it. You are good at programming. So, but you must know them very, very well, actually. Sort of. And that is what the rest of the semester is going to be, as to how to write different kinds of computer programs using a language which we have selected and using the basic simple steps. You can always break it down into simple steps and do this work, actually. So this is what is, now there are different paradigms of programming. There is something called as object-oriented programming. You will learn about it. There are some things like, uh, um, you know, this structured programming. Dijkstra was the person, computer scientist, who did this work, actually. There's a very simple book, Notes on Computer Programming by Dijkstra, which is very useful. And I will give you the URL. You can download it if you want. So it's a paradigm. And what is the paradigm? That the quality, clarity, and development time. You remember that you have got a finite state machine. The, no computer has got infinite memory. And no computer has got infinite. So how much time you will take to execute the program, and how much space you require to store the program. These are the two very important parameters in computer programming. Number one is the time required to execute. 
Sometimes there are programs which take long time and sometimes there are programs which take very short time. So obviously you are looking at efficient programming. So and th there are techniques if you do the analysis of the programs you will find that we can tell you how to analyze the efficiency of the program. So the time is very important and the second important parameter about the quality of a program is how much space it is going to take. If you are going to have a long program and I write a program which is very small. I remember a colleague of mine at IIT Kanpur uh, the, and his two students Nitin Saxena and Neeraj Kayal and then Manindra Agarwal three of them. You know, for 300 years, there is a problem in uh, computer science which was not solved by anybody. And the problem is very simple, I can explain to you. If I give you a number and I ask you a question, is this number a prime number or not? A prime number is a number which is uh, divisible by itself or one, okay? So if I say seven, seven is a prime number. 11, 11 is a prime number, okay? So for up to this is fine, you know, it based on, but if I say the number is 3, 4, 9, size 7, 3, 4, 5, 8 through 3, tell me whether it is prime or not. Now that is not so easy. So you need to develop an algorithm, okay. Now there were many people who developed algorithms. There were many algorithms, but the most efficient algorithm is considered as a polynomial time algorithm. That means the time required for it will not be exponential, but it will be polynomial. Now, nobody had developed a polynomial time algorithm for finding whether P is a prime number or not. And these three people wrote the solution, which is half a page. The algorithm is only half a page in that pseudo code that I explained to you. So this was, and this was something for 300 years, the scientists, the mathematicians and the computer scientists were struggling to find out that algorithm. Nobody could do it. So obviously they are very celebrated scientists, you know, today number theory is a very big thing. Professor Madhusudan and Professor uh, Mukul Bhargav and many other people are very famous computer scientists in number theory. So also Manindra Agarwal. So you will find that polynomial time algorithms are more important. That means the time is very important, the space, the it will occupy, whether how much of the space in the memory it will occupy is also very important. Some programs, some memory management becomes a very major problem. So these two parameters are very important and therefore your program must have clarity, it must have good quality and it must be an efficient program uh, in some sense. You can also make use of structuring of the program through the blocks and the subroutines and the functions which I am sure you will come to know in this course and therefore I will not go into the details. And finally, that's it. <laughs> For me, the, the, the whole uh, set of uh, lectures were meant to introduce you to computer science. Okay. As I said, it's always very important to find out the background information, why you are going to study a language, what is the purpose of, because once you get into the nitty gritty, you will find there are a lot of uh, things that you may get lost into the question as to what I, why am I doing this actually and why am I, if you are getting a degree in mechanical engineering or whatever, but essentially you will find that all of us require basic skills of a language. Like one language last semester you learned, that was the graphics language. That's also a language of engineers. The second language that you are learning this semester is the Python language. That is also the language of instructions and communications for the engineer. Of course, the third language that you are learning, which is French, that is also required for moving around in the world in some sense. So you will find that learning this language is now the game from next lecture. So you will go through variety of things, how data structures are, what are the different kinds of algorithms? What is meant by an algorithm? How to write simple Python programs? You have got an interpreter. The interpreter is an open source interpreter. You can download it. Lot of uh, information about Python is available on the internet. As a matter of fact, most of the things that I have explained to you are also available on the internet. And I'm going to give you the URLs of the Wikipedia you will find. And quite a bit of information on the Wikipedia is also very useful read for all of you. So what I want you to do now is to take these four problems, solve them, write down and give your homeworks to your tutors, number one. Number two is that I have given you the books, the list of books, so please go through them, read it so that you will get to know a little more about it. And the third thing is that I have access to internet, go to Wikipedia and other URLs that I will give, go through them 
you will become more acquainted, more familiar with what I have done in the class. And then my lectures as well as the PowerPoint slides will be in the Moodle of the course actually. Okay? Well, thank you very much. All the best for you. Okay? Thank you.